Hello everyone. Welcome to Sam Science View channel. In today's video, we are going to listen to a science fact. Why are lockup so common in Formula 1 cars? So before going into the video, please watch this entire video and if you have any science related queries, you can comment about it and get it rectified. Now let's get into the video. Lockups are a relatively common phenomenon in Formula 1 cars. They happen when too much force is applied to the brakes causing the disc to stop or rotate slower than the car's motion. The tire then scrubs along the surface of the track sometimes creating white smoke. While you can see this happen relatively often in Formula 1 cars, lockups have become very rare in the road car in the world. There are two reasons for that. Aerodynamics play a major role in Formula 1 and mean that the faster an F1 car goes the more downforce it creates when the downforce increases so does the grip level which means that the cars have more stopping potential at high speeds than they have at lower speeds This also means that the grip level constantly changes while the car is slowing down. It would be relatively difficult to lock the wheels when the car is going 300 km per hour. However, it is much easier to do at speeds below 100 km per hour. Drivers therefore typically hit the brake pedal harder when entering a braking zone. as this is when the car has its maximum stopping potential before easing off as they get towards the turning phase to try and avoid a lockup but there is another reason why f1 cars lock up more often than car in the roads modern road cars are all equipped with anti lock braking system that is abs however the regulations in f1 don't permit this abs the introduction of abs is generally considered one of the most important safety innovations in the automotive world that help to dramatically reduce accident numbers as it means that the car will still react to steering input even in an emergency braking condition the company like um, Benz played an important role in its inception. In 1970, the company showcased the first generation of ABS for passenger cars, commercial trucks and buses. Eight years later, the S-Class was the first production car to offer second generation electronic four-wheel multi-channel ABS. Now we will see about the discs and calipers. Everything depends on the bite of the brakes on the disc. So, F1 cars run carbon discs and pads with aluminum six-spot calipers. Carbon fiber is used for two main reasons and it's not the myth about steel brakes being less powerful. Fundamentally, carbon fiber is lighter than a steel disc, but it also copes with running at high temperature better than steel having first appeared on aircraft with the technology being introduced to F1 by a Gordon Murray at Brabham in the early 80s the compromise with carbon discs is the cost anything lighter on an F1 car is worth the cost so carbon disc brakes have been the de facto choice since the early teething problems were worked out in the 80s over this time the disc and pad pairing has been rapidly developed they are both made from the same friction material and thus both wear out at similar rates maintaining a working temperature has been the challenge with these brakes too cool and the brakes don't bite as hard too hard then the material oxidizes and wear increases keeping heat in the brakes is achieved with the careful sizing of the brake ducts and this is less of a problem 
However, overheating is a much greater issue. If the brakes are run white hot for too long, the oxidization will wear the disc too thin and the disc can fail catastrophically. Initially, radial cooling holes similar to steel discs were run as teams were able to exploit the brake materials even more. They needed more cooling so the number of cooling holes increased commensurately from 100 in 2005 to some 1500 in 2019 the cooling holes are at the point where any more would structurally weaken the discs too much this limitation is based on the rules that the disc must only be 32 mm thick and capped at 278 mm these rules work to prevent even more powerful and expensive brakes while also allowing them to be fitted inside the regulation sized 13 inch wheel rim at this size the brake disc weighs just 1200 grams in first practice a new pair of discs or pads will be battered in then removed and reused as the qualifying or race brakes. Meanwhile, a used set will be fitted for the rest of free practice which gives the parts a life of just 500 miles. Brake material is supplied to the team by two key suppliers, Brembo and Carbone Industries. The disc mounts the axle via an intermediate ring known as a disc bell. This is a precision machined part that matches the inner splints on the disc and the corresponding splints on the axle. The splints do the majority of transferring the torque from disc to axle, although bolts are also used. These are limited as the hole for the bolt invites stress into the assembly. Teams may manufacture their own disc belts or the brake manufacturer may do so. Either way, the precision is crucial to prevent stress occurring which may see the disc or the bell fail. Cooling for the disc is rooted around the upright in carbon fiber ducting and into the cooling hole sewn the inside of the disc. Every team has their own method of achieving this, either ducting direct to the disc or rooting air through channels in the disc bell, then into the disc. Gripping the disc is the caliper, again a heavily regulated part, to limit its potential performance. Current F1 calipers are limited to one per corner, six pistons, two mountings, and made from aluminium based alloys. Despite these limitations, it really to design sees the caliper as stiff forever decreasing weights the use of finite element analysis software packages being critical to the caliper body design equally the thermal stress on the caliper is researched with simulation tools heat builds up in the caliper body as the disc runs through the central channel making the caliper hottest near the last of the opposing piston pairs. Luckily, the need to cool and lighten the caliper sees the body skeletonized with drillings and openings around the piston bores to save weight and reject heat. Even the pistons have a ring of radial drillings to cool the piston and brake fluid behind it from the heat of the carbon friction material at work. Likewise, the carbon brake pads can have drillings to dry to insulate the caliper from the heat made from aluminium lithium alloy or other aluminium alloys with a stiffness limit of 80 GPA that is gigapascal. The caliper body is machined from solid. Brembo is currently the dominant manufacturer and AP Racing are also a common supplier, while 920E supply Racing Point and 
அக்கிபோனோ சப்ளை மக்ளர் ஆல்தோ சிக்ஸ் பிஸ்டன்ஸ் கேலிஃபர்ஸ் ஆர் டிமாண்டட் பை த ரூல்ஸ் டீம்ஸ் கேன் ரன் ஸ்மாலர் நம்பர்ஸ் ஆஃப் பிஸ்டன்ஸ் சின்ஸ் த டூ தௌசண்ட் ஃபோர்டீன் ரூல்ஸ் எக்ஸ்ப்ளாய்டட் மோர் பிரேக்கிங் ஃப்ரம் த இஆர்எஸ் கே த ரேர் பிரேக்ஸ் ஆர் ஹார்ட்லி ரெக்யூர்ட் அட் சம் சர்க்யூட்ஸ் ஒன்லி வென் இனிஷியல் பிரேக்கிங் இஸ் ஹை இட் இஸ் த கேலிஃபர் யூஸ் டு பிரேக் த ரெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த பிரேக்கிங் எஃபோர்ட் கம்மிங் ஃப்ரம் த ரீஜெனரேட்டிவ் பிரேக்கிங் எஃபெக்ட் ஸோ டீம்ஸ் கேன் ரன் ஃபோர் பிஸ்டன் ரேர் கேலிஃபர்ஸ் டு சேவ் சம் வெயிட் அண்ட் பேலன்ஸ் த எஃபோர்ட் அண்ட் கூலிங் ரெக்யூர்ட் ஃப்ரம் தெம் நவ் வில் சி அபவுட்ஸ் த பெடல் இஃப் த ஷார்ப் எண்ட் ஆஃப் த பிரேக்கிங் சிஸ்டம் இஸ் த டிஸ்க்ஸ் அண்ட் த கேலிஃபர்ஸ் then the action all stems from the humble brake pedal f1 brakes can no longer have any power assistance so the brake line pressure must all be generated by the driver pressing on the pedal to operate the master cylinders what's more the driver brakes with solely their left foot which needs to exert some 125 kg on the pedal for the maximum braking effort it's hard to exert such a high load with any deftness with muscle alone but luckily for the driver the g forces from the braking also act on the left leg adding to the muscles effort to apply the 125 kg pressure Typically the pedal is now made from carbon fiber to the team's own design it's a stronger safety critical part it still weighs very little the foot plate is adapted to suit the driver's performance to hold the foot in position over pumps and through corners additionally to suit different drivers the leverage ratio between pedal and master cylinders can be achieved with different pedal designs Currently the pedal operates two master cylinders these create the pressure in the fluid line to the front and rear brakes and each master cylinder provides a separate supply of brake fluid from separate reservoirs mounted in the nose this split system dates back to the days when brakes failed more regularly still a safety factor nowadays should there be a brake failure the car will be almost controllable with just the front or rear brakes working the master cylinders themselves are microcosm of f1 complexity still fundamentally just a piston compressing fluid within a cylinder to create pressure the contemporary master cylinder is a two stage device there is a stepped piston the initial stroke compresses the first piston to create a sudden large pressure increase this rapidly moves the pads back into contact with the disc and then applies pressure for maximum initial braking then the second piston is used to maintain that pressure for the duration of the braking event master cylinders tend to be supplied by the caliper supplier although that isn't necessarily always the case as the raw two master cylinders one each for front and rear brakes there needs to be a means to balance the pressure between them to match the car's weight distribution and grip the master cylinders may have different bore sizes but there is also the adjustable bias bar mechanism one end of each master cylinder attaches to a pivoting beam known as a bias bar the pivot is aligned with the pedal and if the master cylinders are equidistant along the bias bar there is a 50-50 split in effort between them if the driver adjusts the bar to have one master cylinder offset more than the other the front to rear bias can be varied this adjustment can be achieved with a rotating adjuster or a more complex adjuster with preset This is what we used to see the driver adjusting with their hand around the lap. The bias bar still exists, but the bias is now more e- easily 
achieved with the brake by wire system via steering wheel buttons another effect with the brake bias is not just the static split of front to rear braking but also how the bias changes through the braking event as the rear of the car will get lighter from weight transfer during a long braking episode the bias ideally needs to shift with it this used to be achieved with the pedal and bias bar geometry but again is now much easier to adopt via brake by wire system brake fluid is transferred under pressure through pipe work from the master cylinders leading to each caliper through the wish bone legs wherever there is movement required flexible braided pipes are used elsewhere rigid pipes are used to maintain pressure within the system now let's see something about brake by wire since 2014 with the change in the energy recovery system that is ers the use of brake by wire system has been allowed for the rear brakes as the ers k recovers energy under braking the drag of the mgu acts as a brake also slowing the car however this effect isn't constant the braking effort from the mguk will vary depending on its region setting and how charged the battery is with this change in ers braking effort the driver will suffer imbalanced braking sometimes getting rear braking from ers sometimes not and not always with any warning so the fia allow a system termed bbw to control the rear brakes there is still a rear master cylinder at the pedal but the brake line terminates at the bbw unit mounted inside the gearbox this unit recognizes the braking demand by the driver and based on the pressure in the rear brake line it will then know whatever regenerative braking effort the ers will apply via a signal from the secu it then deducts one from the other and via a hydraulically operated active master cylinder it will apply only the pressure at the rear brakes needed to off the ers effect giving the driver a balanced braking event that's the simple explanation the actual software to give a consistent braking effort to the driver is far more complex moreover the driver will get a different feel at the pedal as the rear master cylinder is effectively capped off so some compliance is put into the system with walls and accumulators to replicate the conventional pedal feel being safety critical the bbw unit has a fail safe should the sensors or active master cylinder fail the brakes return to being operated by the pressure in the rear brake line also to prevent any pseudo anti brake lock brakes software being used wheel speed cannot be a factor in the system now with electronic brake bias possible the driver's use controls on the steering wheel to alter brake bias and brake bias migration never needing to take a hand off the steering wheel to adjust them so next time you see a driver braking into a corner from 200 miles per hour to close to a standstill it's worth contemplating just how much is going on when the driver stamps on the pedal so i hope so you got some scientific fact relating to why we get that smoke and uh, how the technology is being improved in f1 cars and how they put their effort to stop a car a speedy car stand still and uh, we have noticed about the law cops so if you have any science related queries you can ask to me 
i i can gladly answer to you i'm way awaiting for it we will meet in the next science fact with the next science fact treasury series until then it's goodbye from sam take care